In this episode we will present the most interesting and revered gods of ancient Egypt. Osiris Osiris is one of the most famous gods of Egyptian mythology. You cannot understand ancient Egypt if you have not understood the relationship between Osiris, Isis and Horus, the main family of gods in ancient Egypt. Osiris is very similar to Zeus from Greek mythology. He is described as a traditional pharaoh, with a crown with ostrich feathers on each side, with a long chin and defining elements, but with green skin instead of brown, and appears wrapped in mummy bandages over his body. Osiris married his sister, Isis, and together they ruled the pre-dynastic Egypt. Pharaohs, even Tutankhamun, and many others, will be inspired by this model of marriage. The legend says that before the pharaohs, Egypt was ruled by two dynasties of gods, one of demigods and one of humans. The last of these was Nama, the legendary pharaoh who is known as the unifier of Egypt. Also the legend tells us that Osiris' jealous brother, named Seth, will kill him by deception or brutality. There are several versions of the myth, but they all end the same way. Seth tears Osiris into pieces, usually 14 in number, and spreads them all over Egypt. The ancient Egyptians saw Osiris as a benevolent figure who dealt with the transition to death, rebirth and regeneration. The Egyptians believed that Osiris would guide him to death and the afterlife. And his main responsibility was to ensure the passage of Pharaoh to the hereafter. After the fall of the New Kingdom, Osiris was a prominent cult figure. His worshippers worshipped him in fertility rituals presented as mysteries of life, death and rebirth. And this happened until the Classical Era. Until the arrival of the Byzantine Emperor, Justinian, who decreed the destruction of pagan temples. Seth Seth is the main villain in Egyptian mythology. He is the jealous and murderous brother of Osiris and Isis, but at the same time is a very interesting figure. First of all, he has an animal head. Although other gods in Egyptian mythology share this characteristic, Seth is the only one of these gods that no one still knows what animal his head represents. Egyptologists refer to him as the Seth the Beast. Before his fall, he was considered a great warrior. When the sun god Ra descended from the sky at night, and fought with the chaos snake Apophis, Seth stood in front of the solar boat fighting alongside Ra, and protecting the sun god. So this made him the main figure to be worshipped by the Hyksos, foreign warrior invaders, who occupied Egypt for a while. But Seth will tear his brother to pieces, and fight Osiris' son, Horus, for the right to rule Egypt. In the end, Seth will be defeated by Horus. Isis The goddess of fertility and motherhood in Egyptian mythology, Isis, was considered the daughter of the god Keb, which means earth, and the goddess, Nut, which means heaven. She was the sister and wife of Osiris, the god of the dead, and the mother of Horus, the god of heaven. After the end of the new reign in the 4th century BC, the center of the cult of Isis was Philae, an island on the Nile where a large temple was built in her honor. The ancient writings gave Isis magical powers and she was represented with human features and bovine horns. Her personality was similar to that of Hathor the goddess of love and joy. Horus if Isis is the most popular goddess, and Anubis, the jackal god, the most recognizable god in Egypt, Horus is somewhere in the middle. He is well recognized by his falcon head. He enters the scene at the end of these series of myths, when it's time to take revenge for his father's death. The great end, that is, the great battle, takes place between Seth, the murderous brother, and Horus, the rightful heir to the throne. To many Egyptians, Horus was not just a god, not just the son of Osiris, but his incarnation. Hence the belief that Osiris represents Pharaoh in death, and Horus in life. Like many other myths, we find different forms of the fight between Seth and Horus. In some myths, the two are fighting terribly. 
In others, they participate in competitions. In the last stories, Seth tries to win by deception until the gods decide a final contest. And here Horus wins and takes his father's place. In general, Horus does not kill Set and the two continue to play different roles. As ruler, Horus serves as a hunter, god warrior and god of heaven. His most important element remains the Eye of Horus, used in talismans and inscriptions to ward off evil. This symbol became very popular in antiquity and can be found today. Sobek Sobek was the crocodile god of the Nile. The god occurs mainly during the Middle Kingdom and at a time when the gods are beginning to mingle. Sobek merges with Horus, one of the most important gods, to create Sobek Ra, a solar deity. In Egypt, in those days, all the gods associated with the sun were the strongest. But at the end of the New Kingdom and the entry into the Hellenistic world, the crocodile god makes an even more radical change. In the past he was a semi-evil deity, not very well known. But merging with the god Ra, will go straight to the top. Although he will stay here for a while, Sobek will become a popular figure in the classical era. He will become a cult figure in the Greco-Roman world. The Fayum region, traditionally associated with this god in antiquity, as well as the city of Kom Ombo, served as a center of worship for Sobek, the crocodile god. Anubis Anubis was the jackal god of the dead and the mummification. He is probably the most recognizable god of ancient Egypt. And maybe because of Pharaoh Tuthankhamun and Carter, who discovered his tomb. Because then his image was made public. And the dog-headed god ignited the spirits of Western world. Egyptologists claim that he had a wolf's or jackal's head. But no one can be sure. In ancient times, he was described as a jackal, guarding the tombs of thieves. In the Old Kingdom he was upgraded when he became associated with the pharaoh in the afterlife. His role as a guide for the dead will become essential. But this role is not the most famous. Although he is a great judge of the dead, Anubis does not appear in too many myths. In fact, in the myth of Osiris, Anubis arrives too late to save his king but in time to stop Seth from desecrating Osiris' body. But Seth turns into a leopard to scare him, and Anubis kills him. Then Anubis will skin the leopard and wear his skin like a coat, patrolling the tombs of the Egyptians to keep them safe from the grave robbers. In another version of the myth, Anubis does not kill Seth, but helps Isis to embalm Osiris. And so he becomes the god of mummification, and it is a very good example of how the roles of the gods changed and evolved in ancient Egypt. Ra In Egyptian mythology, Ra was the sun god, being represented with a human body and a falcon head. He was considered the creator and leader of the universe. At first sight, he looks exactly like Horus, having a falcon head. But at a closer look, you can see that he has on top of his head a sun. The cult of Ra was originally local, but during the ancient reign it spread throughout Egypt. The main temple of the god was located in the city of Heliopolis, which became an important center when the cult was adopted as the state religion. As a result, Ra was associated with other important deities, especially Amun and Horus. Bastet the strangest and most confusing period in the history and geography of ancient Egypt, is the separation between Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Especially in mythology, because the two entities separated for a period, each had their own gods and goddesses. Lower Egypt was the home of the goddess Bastet, the lion-headed goddess of war. She was the defender of the pharaoh and the sun god Ra. Bastet served a role similar to Seth, traveling in Ra's solar boat and defending him from Apophis, the snake monster. Her hometown was Bubastis, where priests mummified cats in her temple. Over time, her role as a warrior decreases and she is portrayed as a cat. Cats were revered in ancient Egypt as protectors against desert diseases.
Therefore, they played a very important and special role in the Egyptian world. After the change from lion to cat, Bastet will become less ferocious and will differ from the lion-headed goddesses in Upper Egypt. Although she never knew the immense popularity of the great gods at the top of the list, she remained loved in northern Egypt until the fall of the dynasties. In the Greek world she became a minor goddess of the moon. Thot Thot, the ibis-headed god, began his career as the god of the moon. But he was soon given the additional role of god of wisdom, magic, and measurements. Thot will accompany Ra in the solar boat to defeat Apophis and serve as a scribe of the gods. This made him associated by the Egyptians with the invention of writing and the preservation of knowledge. Although he did not begin as a popular god, with the development of stories, he was introduced into myths as the voice of reason and as a mediator. But above all, he was seen as the one who records the weighing of souls in the afterlife. His role was to make sure that no one was denied paradise, if they lived according to the law of the goddess of justice, Mart. But the most important role was to measure the universe. If you think about it, you realize that the Egyptians were very logical in their mythology. Thot was working on the perfect equation to keep the universe in order. And as the Egyptians were the greatest engineers, they must have worshipped the Ibis god. And that makes their mythology make sense. Ptah Ptah was a creator deity who is said to have created the world through the thoughts of his heart and words. He is depicted as a mummy with his hands sticking out of his bandages and holding a stick. His head is shaved and he wears a cap. Ptah is associated with the craftsman and the high priest of the Memphis temple who held the title of great leader of the craftsman. Hathor Hathor was the daughter of Ra and the patron goddess of women, love, beauty, pleasure and music. She is usually described in three forms, as a cow, as a woman with cow ears, and as a woman wearing a headdress with the horns of a cow. In the last manifestation, she holds the solar disk between her horns. She was the consort of Horus, and her name means House of Horus. She had many temples, the most famous being at Dendara. There also was a dark side of Hathor. It was believed that Ra sent her to punish the human race for its cunning and wickedness. But Hathor was so evil with the humans that Ra, horrified, called her back. He tricked her into mixing powder in her beer. The drink made her kind and gentle, the friend of humanity. Amun Also known as Amen, Amun or Amun, he was the most important god in Thebes in the Old Kingdom. Thebes turns from a village into a real strong metropolis in the Middle and New Kingdom. He becomes the patron of Thebes and the pharaohs. He will be combined with the sun god Ra, and will become Amun Ra, the king of the gods and ruler of Aeneas, the nine gods of Thebes. His name means the hidden of mysterious form, and is often represented with a feather ornament on top of his head. Other times it is described as a ram or goose, because his true identity cannot be revealed. The major temple was Karnak, but his fame spread beyond the borders of Egypt. His cult spread to Ethiopia, Nubia, Libya and Palestine. Even Alexander the Great consulted his oracle. Taure. I will end this presentation with a very strange goddess. Perhaps the strangest precisely because it does not fit into the Egyptian pattern. Taure is a goddess of fertility, but she does not have a simple animal head. It is an anthropomorphic hippopotamus. The hippopotamus had a double role for the ancient Egyptians. They were feared for their aggressive and unpredictable behavior, but they were also admired for their dedication to protecting their offspring. Therefore, the hippopotamus was seen as a symbol of fear, but also of protection. Taure is one of the many hippopotamus goddesses, but she has grown in popularity in the Middle Kingdom. Then she became a very popular house goddess. Protector of children and pregnant women, 
and her figure appeared in many Egyptian houses. She soon became associated with the rebirth and guarding of the graves. The Egyptians believed that if they put her image next to a tomb they could banish the evil spirits. Only in the last days of Egypt did Taure receive her own temples. Here, her worshippers believed that she gave birth to the sun god Ra, every morning. Even after the temples disappeared, her amulets remained popular. These were the Egyptian gods. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Mythos, the Historian. And if you really did enjoy it, please like the video. And if you look forward for new videos on my channel, please subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when new videos arrive.